very good evening ladies and gentlemen and once again a very warm welcome to each and every one of you attending this live webinar last week we received several enquiries for a dental webinar on the topic digitally guided surgery we couldn't think of anyone better than dr sanjay asnani himself so i take this opportunity to welcome a speaker dr sanjay asnani Gold medalist Dr. Sanjay Asnani is an oral and maxillofacial surgeon based in Ahmednagar, Maharashtra. He has undergone several training programs to master the skills required for implantology. He has been to the prestigious Buffalo University in New York. He is a master of immediate loading implantology and has received training from Dr. Stephen Ide, the father of modern basal implantology. He is also the director of the Computer Aided Implant Academy in Italy. He holds a fellowship. in temporomandibular disorders sleep apnea and orofacial pain management from the rosman university new york he has also received a fellowship from the indian society of oral implantologists the isoi he has received extensive training in guided implantology from south korea he is a mentor a keynote speaker and overall a pioneer in cad cam dentistry in ahmednagar maharashtra with this i welcome each and every one of you to the live webinar on the topic catalyzing implant dentistry with digitally guided surgery over to you dr sanjay uh good evening everyone thank you rubin for this introduction i hope everybody is safe and healthy and enjoying this lockdown except for few heroes who are still working in the clinics thinking that nothing is going to happen to them god bless them all so friends as you all know that one second where is the screen yeah okay so as you all know that whole world is fighting with this covid 19 and we are in lockdown since last 40 days and everybody is at home enjoying spending a quality time with the family but still worried what is going to happen next when this lockdown is going to get over and what will be the future of dentistry everybody is worried but believe me friends we are still at a better position as compared to other professions okay we have to do some minor changes here and there in our clinic and just for safety of ourselves our staff and the society and we can start working and it's just a matter of say few months then the, again we will we will be in a good position so but till then we need to take some necessary precautions as you know it's a deadly virus we don't know we don't know the enemy like how it is how it's going to affect your health and also just only thing is that stay at home maintain social distancing stay safe it's just a matter of few more days i'll tell you friends so take care so let's start with the seminar today's topic is everything about guided implant surgery so please share your screen the ppt it's share already screen. there i'm sharing it uh, is it not visible no not visible so one second yeah uh, go to share screen and choose the ppt Go to on Zoom. There is an option called Share Screen. I had already shared, I guess. Uh, no, this Share Screen. No. Uh, one second. There's some issue over here. One second. Share Screen. No, I'll have to exit first. Wait, one second. No, no sir. Like uh, there is a hello. Hello. Uh, just go to minimize the room and go to PPT and open and keep it minimized. And again, go to Zoom, share screen, and choose the PPT. Zoom, share screen. Yeah. Now is it visible? No, sir. Right. Yeah, is 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 on the yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Full screen, sir. Full screen, please. Full screen, please. Okay. Full screen, please. Yeah, it's full screen. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. All set. Yeah. So, uh, today we are going to see what all steps are required to do a guided implant surgery. What all you require? What are the requirements from your side, from lab, everything? So, as a beginner in implantology. uh we are always confused which way to go what protocol is to be followed uh, what system is to be used which system which implant is to be used so everybody is confused as a beginner but 
guided surgery believe me friends has made uh, life easy of lot of practitioners uh, maybe old or new practitioners also but if you are a beginner i'll suggest that you should have a sound knowledge first of a con first of conventional implantology uh, how the conventional implantology goes the complications how to manage the complications then only jump to this system that's a guided implant surgery so if you look at my journey i started implantology 10 years back with a system called as edin you must all be familiar but as the things advanced i jumped into few other systems like nobody was there to guide initially so which uh, it was based on uh, implant systems like the practice was based whatever salesman used to tell us used to buy the system at that time then i also burned my hands in with uh, basal implants it's a very good system but it has some it has its own indications and contraindications it cannot be used in in all the cases the indication is only to be used in severely resolved maxilla or mandibular cases so but people are using it in all cases then this was a megagen system this is a beautiful implant system uh, it's a korean system the aneurysm implant is is one of the best implants i have used till date believe me friends the design is too good it's very good for maxilla and immediate loading in maxilla and mandible it's a very good system then i came across a system called as dio navy uh it was a fully guided system first time launched in india and with with very, uh, the implants are again korean and good implants and finally i found a combination with uh, ostem one guide this is also a guide fully guided system along with this ostem one guide you can use it as a universal kit along with any system so these are all systems which i have in my clinic so in 9 years uh, i started with invasive implant surgery with an every implant we used to open the flap given in season open the flap uh, suturing was done post op but now as as the time has advanced we have moved from minimal from invasive to minimal invasive surgery that is through guided implant surgery as you can see on see on the screen the difference between two uh, procedures okay this is an implant history in brief we'll not go into a details everybody knows how the implant started and what evolutionary changes have happened in implant dentistry and uh, we can say uh, uh, 1951 was a year where uh, we, we it was a game changer for everybody where uh, professor brenamark who found that uh, found the concept of uh, osseointegration integration of implants and then everybody started uh, working on that how the implants will osseointegrate integrate they started working on the implant designs the surface coating of the implants and um, how we can load the implants immediately with the help of by changing the design the threads and coating the surface of the implant so all the changes took place and in 90s uh, all on four concept was introduced where you can bypass all the vital structures such as intraalveolar nerve the mental nerve and the maxillary sinus so uh, with the introduction of all on four there was no need of grafting no sinus you can bypass the sinus and load the load it immediately so all on four concept was designed later on again uh, in 2010 and 11 guided surgery became um, uh, hallmark in other countries like european countries where everybody started doing guided surgeries with which was very minimally invasive so in india in, in last 5 years yes of course we have shifted to guided surgery we'll see the advantages of guided surgery or the conventional surgery so this was professor brenamark's uh, words where no one should die with their teeth sitting in the glass of water he wanted that everybody should have a fixed denture right so uh, today we are heading towards that in india a lot of implants are being done every day in and out so implant can be divided into a pre brenamark era and a post brenamark era okay what was pre brenamark era it was immediate loading to stimulate the bone response what brenamark believed was delayed loading and post brenamark what changes happened was where like immediate loading but more focus was given to prevent the micro movements so that the failure rate was reduced so if you see if you see the protocol of branamark what he what he suggested was always use a biocompatible material implants should be submerged so that they heal they should be subcrestally placed so that healing is perfect delayed loading for at least wait for 3 to 8 months depending on the condition and the quality of bone you are you are placing use of low rotary instrument so that low, less heat is generated there is less bone necrosis hospital setup of course to prevent uh, sepsis use of titanium instruments use of acrylic prosthesis and avoid radiograph during the healing healing phase so this was the protocol which branamark followed 
then what happened post Brahma era? Everybody, see today, everybody wants immediate loading. Like today you place an implant and by evening or by tomorrow or within 72 hours, the patient wants fixed teeth. So nobody wants to wait. So what are the changes which uh, happened post Brahma era? Immediate loading itself did not, uh, they came to a conclusion that immediate loading itself did not lead to a fibrous encap encapsulation. And you should take care of excessive micro movements during a phase which is called as healing phase. As you can see on the graph, uh, when you place an implant, you get a very good primary stability. And the primary stability dips at, say, at around three to four weeks where secondary stability takes over. So there's a, a, a phase, uh, say, of two weeks where the stability is almost zero. So if there's a micro movement during this phase, the implant is going to fail. Okay. So more emphasis was given how to reduce this. Okay. So changes happened according to this. Now we'll see what are the common mistakes which we do during an implant placement as a beginner. Okay. If you don't plan it properly, there is a high chance that you might damage the vital structures such as inferior nerve, mental nerve. Okay. Why this happens is because we don't do a proper planning. We don't follow the protocol, which is which says that you should always be two millimeters away from the vital structures, such as the nerve, the vessels, and the maxillary sinus. So, if you follow this protocol, you're you're you. I'm sure you'll not do this mistake. But everybody has done this mistake. Even I have done my this mistake during my early days, when where nerve nerve injury was there in two or three patients. But then, after you plan it properly, after you take proper uh, diagnosis, uh, do a diagnosis, diagnosis, then you will never never do such mistake. Second common mistake is mistake is that. Of bleeding, we encounter bleeding, especially in uh, mandibular anterior region. If you perforate a lingual cortical plate, you you might end up in damaging the lingual vessel, lingual artery, which might lead to a life-threatening hematoma, and such bleeding can occur. Again, uh, proper planning, you can avoid such complication. Other complications are improper angulation of implants, which might lead to perforation of either buccal or lingual cortical plate, an implant might expose. And this will come to know when you open it for second stage. Okay. Next complication which, which can happen is implant in ectopic position which cannot be restored. Now, if you can see the OPG, the implant on the right side, you cannot restore that implant. How will you restore? It has been misplaced in the sinus. So a wrong planning which leads to such complications. During, during all this, we fail to understand that prostatic complications can also happen. We just focus on the surgical aspect, like placing an implant, but we never focus on the prosthetic part. We never start with end in our mind. What I'll tell you is what I've learned from my mentors is, mentors is like when you are, when you have a case, you should have an end in the mind where how the processes will be, what kind of processes you are going to give, whether it's a screw retained or a cement retained processes, whether it's hybrid denture or, <coughs> or you're going to give PFM. So all this should be kept in mind. We, we fail to understand this, that prosthetic, that implants is a prosthetic driven field. Okay, 20% is surgical part, 80% is processes. Okay, so this was, this was my case, which was done uh, somewhere around 2012, where there was no CBCT in my, at my place. And wherever I found the bone, I just placed, went on placing the implants. And when I took an OPG, all implants were looking parallel, no problems at all whatsoever. This patient was diabetic, he was smoker, so we just placed implant wherever he found the bone. Okay. When we went for the second stage and we, when we placed the impression components, you can see where they are. They are all in different angles. You cannot take an impression also in such cases. Okay. So we did an open tray, trayless technique where tray was not used. We took rubber based impression. Prosthetic processes was given because our labs are very good, very smart guys. They can manage all the angulations and give, give the work back to you. So this was the processes which was delivered patient was happy for say around two years and then he came back to me with this broken processes. Why this happened? Because prosthetic was never taken into consideration. The occlusion was never taken into consideration. The position of implant was compromised. The angulation was compromised. Everything was compromised in this case, but it survived for two years. Okay. Then the patient came back with this. So what to do next? We'll discuss this case when I'll show you my cases, but keep it in mind, this complication can happen if you don't consider the prosthetic part. So today, friends, you can see technology drives our world. Okay. Everything is in our hands. You just click the Google button and you just click the button on smartphone and everything, the whole world is in front of you. What we are doing today is a part of technology. We are doing a webinar where 
many of us as us are watching i am sitting at home you people are sitting at home and still we are interacting so technology is driving a world today but still there is lack of digital still skills which is a still a big barrier okay so we have to overcome these skill so there are seven ways to improve patient's care with 3d implant dentistry and guided surgery what are those seven ways one is smart planning second is smart scanning third is smart surgery fourth is smart inventory smart temporaries smart panel abutments and smart collaboration and education we will see one by one how it will help you so before you jump into this few terms to be reviewed first is which will be used routinely during this presentation one is uh, dicom files okay what is a dicom it's a diagnostic imaging and communication in medicine then there is image segmentation stl file you can read from this model and intraoral scanner and milling these are the common terms which will be used during this presentation okay we'll see a video how implant logic digital implant logic can change your life just concentrate on the video this is an old conventional implant system where patient comes to us we take impressions we take models we send the patient for opg this is the first during the first two sittings <clears throat> then we place an implant wait for four months again the patient comes we have a lot of x rays in front of us and when the patient leaves he has a lot of visits have been done okay but there's a better way to do it go digital do an intraoral scanning which provides you an accurate impression get a cbct done this goes to the lab plan on implant software the prosthetic is planned first then your surgical guide is planned the position of implant according to the bone available the guide is fabricated and the whole packet comes to you so nowadays companies provide you with the kit with the implant with the surgical guide everything in one box the complete package which you receive in the clinic and you can do all the things in single sitting place the guide no incision given no suturing implant placed in exact three dimensional position and a provisional process is given on the same day okay so you save lot of appointments patient is satisfied he will refer more patients to you and you have a lot of time to do other works like study attend webinars improve your skills okay so this is how it will help you so this is a difference you can see an open hand surgery and a guided surgery you can see a difference where a lot of bleeding is there a lot of hematoma will be there post op if you do an open surgery suturing is required and on the other hand it's a full guided protocol where the, the lower image is immediate post op where there is no bleeding no sutures okay it's a clean surgery so then what's the difference between an analog and digital surgery you can see in analog surgery see here i am not promoting any system nor i am promoting any scanner okay it's just they are good videos that's why i am showing it to you in analog you you have to take impressions send it to the lab for the models patient will gag there is lot of anxiety lot of apprehension on the other hand if you do if you have a scanner the patient is very much comfortable there is no gag no nausea nothing and you get an accurate impression of patient's jaw of the teeth okay with minimal errors then you yourself are very much conscious about the about the vital structures you are worried about where to place an implant how far your implant will be you might damage the nerve you might end up in perforating the buccal or cortical plate but on the other hand your angulation might go wrong you might damage the adjacent teeth 
<coughs> but with guided surgery, as it, everything is planned on CAT cam, you are very much sure that your implant will be in exact three dimensional position. Chances of errors will be minimized. Post op, there will be no pain, no swelling. There will be very much less bleeding when you do uh, guided implant surgery. On the other hand, with open surgery, you can see you have to raise the flap, do a cortical, uh, do a crestal, reduce the crestal bone. A lot of bleeding is there. With guided, you just have to place the guide, follow the instructions which are given on the, which come along with the your uh, surgical guide. There's a drilling protocol which has to be followed. You can see how comfortable the patient is. So here, this will require suturing. Okay. Then taking off, recording impressions again with all the blood in the patient's mouth. <clears throat> Here, your provisional is ready because you have planned everything on CAD CAM. The prosthesis is ready to deliver. You can see this the same day after placing the implant. You can deliver the prosthesis, adjust the occlusion. Looks good. So, what are the merits of digital dentistry? We'll see one by one. One is smart planning. You can plan everything on the CAT CAM. You can see the patient's occlusion. You can see, uh, you can plan the processes first and plan the position of the implants. You, can, you are very much sure that your implant is, you are safe. Your implant is in exact three dimensional position and you are away from the nerve and vital structures. The oxygen loads are properly distributed because you are planning the processes before you are planning the implants. This is called a smart planning. You are very much sure that you are not going to damage the nerve or you're not going to enter the sinus. Okay, so safety is there. Accuracy is there. And what happens with conventional implants, especially in lower uh, molar areas, when you place an implant, you are not sure that you have placed the implant in the center or exactly in the center. You may be either measly or distally to the adjacent tooth. So what will happen is incorrect position of the implant. The, there will be a cantilever, either mesial or distal cantilever, which might lead to fracture of processes in near future and also reduce the lifespan of the implant. But with guided, you are very much sure that you have planned it exactly in the center. In the three dimensional the oxygen loads are equally distributed. So chances of failure are very less in case of guided surgery. Smart scanning. So the occlusion. Main part is when you, when you scan, you can scan the occlusion in a few seconds. You get accurate, exact occlusion. This minimizes the chances of errors in the process. If the process comes to you, there's no need to check the processes, no need to check the high points. You can directly cement the processes with few minor adjustments. So it's called a smart scanning. Top to down approach, as I told you, this is a case where process processes is planned first, how many teeth are required are to be replaced. According to the uh, processes, your functional cusp is, uh, everything is planned. So you, you choose the oxygen distribution forces, you choose the abutment, you choose the surgical management and everything has, is properly managed. Okay, smart surgery. So what you do in smart surgery, no need to take an incision, just place the guide properly, fix the guide and follow the instruction given by the implant company. So final process is, is already considered. The angulation and abutment of the abutment is already considered what kind of abutment you're going to use. So whether you're going to do a screw retained or cement retained processes is already planned. Type of gui guidance is predetermined, whether it's a canine guidance or a group function, it is predetermined. So prior to surgery, anatomical challenges such as heart tissues are considered with CBCT because you have everything in hand. CBCT is there, your impressions are there. So you are, it's planned according to the vital structure. So this is a flapless surgery versus the flap surgery. So there is, in flapless, there is limited swelling and bleeding as told already, less risk of inflammation and infection. Recovery is very fast. Whereas in a surgery with, when you reflect a flap, there is a bleeding, there is swelling, there is very uh, high chance of inflammation and infection. There might be pain for a few days. And it takes a few weeks for recovery or a few days for recovery. Whereas in this, the nerve path is already considered. The nerve compression or penetration is avoided. So you are very much sure that you are not going to damage the nerve. The sinus anatomy is considered whether to graft or not to graft is a decision which is taken prior to implant placement. With this, you can place an implant and if ever grafting is required, once the implant is placed in three-dimensional position, you can remove the guide, reflect the flap and do a GBR. So you are very sure that implant is in exact position. Okay, so graft or not to graft, 
the decision is made prior. Okay. <clears throat> the bone volume is determined whether how much bone volume is there. The quantity and quality of bone is known. Okay. So whether you want to go for a, uh, you can predict the short term or the long long term outcome. Whether you want to plan reduce the bone height in case of full mouth cases where you require to reduce the bone height to increase the intra intra space that can be predetermined. You get a bone reduction guide also. Now smart inventory. With this, if you are doing a guided surgery, you don't need to invent a lot in implants. You don't need to keep a stock of implants. You don't don't need to keep a stock of abutments. You don't need to keep a stock of bone grafts. See, if you are planning on a computer, the company will tell you which kind, which size implant you require for this case, which abutment you require, and whether bone graft is required or not. So you can order once the case is planned. So automatically your inventory comes down. Okay, so it's called a smart inventory, smart temporaries and abutments. As I already said, you can plan your temporaries and provisionals are already ready with you. It's called as one-day dentistry. Your uh, temporaries are milled. Okay, step one is. If you have a scanner, scan it, get a CBCT done. Step two is planning and designing, which is done on an implant software. Step three is manufacture of the guide and your abutments. Step four is production of surgical guide and planning of smart abutments and temporaries. So these are all the steps involved. Okay, life becomes very easy. You can do even indirect sinus lifts with guided surgeries. Okay, there are special kits which are available. You can choose the abutments, which abutment you want to use. Then smart collaboration and communication. With this, excuse me, what are the benefits of this technology? Okay, digital dentistry makes it easier for us to communicate with the patient. You can show the patient on the screen if you have a scanner that how the occlusion is, which teeth are missing, which teeth are extruded or intruded. Everything can be shown to the patient. Uh, live three D images can be shown, which can help you to convince the patient faster. The communication is improved, reduced chair side time. Right? <clears throat> How can this dentist, digital dentistry change your life? So going digital allows me to improve all aspects of implant treatment. It turns an emergency into a production. It turns an emergency into a production. This means that if you are if you have done a case on a guided with a guided surgery, you have all the records of the patient. Okay. And if God forbids, if his crown is broken, a patient gives you a call, sir, my crown, the crown has been dislodged and I have misplaced the crown. You have the designs ready with you. You can call the lab. And if you have a good lab, they can give you a crown which is milled in one hour, right? So by the time the patient comes to your clinic in the evening, you have a crown ready. So if it would have been a conventional way, you have to take an impression, repeat the impression, send the impression to the lab. It takes three, four days for crown to come. But with this, you have all the records with you, right? So before the patient enters your clinic, you have a crown ready of the patient. This is called a smart dentistry, right? Patient education becomes very easy. It saves the time, the cost of the impression materials. <laughs> Enjoy ease of taking impression, eliminates retakes, the errors. Errors are omitted. So now we'll see the process, how this is done. Okay. So as I said, first step is you require a CBCT. And if you have an intraoral scanner, you can directly scan. If you don't have an intraoral scanner in your clinic, no problems. You can take a rubber base impression, pour it in a die stone, courier the CBCT DICOM files and the models to the lab or the center where you are planning, which uh, from where you are planning to get your guide done. What they will do is they will merge the both the data on the computer on an implant software. They will design a surgical guide and the implant will be planned. It will be sent to you for verification. Once you are verified, you are happy with the planning. You can tell them that everything is perfect. They will start the production of the surgical guide and they will send everything back to you. So it takes around seven days. So as I said, you require a CT scan, a trios, uh, a CBCT, a CT scan, intraoral scan or a stone model. So these are various options you can have. One is when you have only CBCT center in your city, and you don't have a intraoral scanner. So what to do? Get the scan done, stone model, send it to the lab. They will design, confirm the request and send it back to you. Once you confirm, they'll give a guide and the implants, everything. So this takes around 10 days to deliver. The second option is if you have a CBCT center in your 
uh, sitting and an intraoral scanner in your clinic. So it will save around three to four days because the courier time will be reduced. Okay, so you can directly send from your laptop to the to the lab. They will design in one day. They'll send back to you. You check the everything. Everything the process is same. You check it. Give a confirmation. Then the guide will be produced. This will be delivered to you in seven days. So you save almost three to four days in this. Third option is when you have a CBCT center, you have an intraoral scanner, and you have a planning software in house in your clinic. Like I have Exocad in my clinic. So it makes life very easy. You plan yourself, right? It saves a lot of time. So once you have designed wherever you want, you can place the implants according to your, according, you can see yourself. It's like you are planning it. Okay, you're not relying on somebody else. So chances of errors are reduced in this. So once this is done, you send this to lab to print a guide. Okay, and this will take around say three to four days. So you can save around six days. Options are uh, available. In, what options you can choose, it's up to you. So, <clears throat> what data you get in CBCT is you get only heart tissue data, right? You get the condition of the bone and the condition of your teeth. Okay. What you get in a scan is a soft tissue data and teeth, but bone information will not get in your, in your scan. Okay. So in both the things, what is common? The tooth. Okay. In CBCT, you have heart tissue details in, in your intraoral scan or an impression, you have a soft tissue details, right? So common thing in both is the teeth. Okay, so what happens is you, when you send this, they mark the three points on your CBCT and on your model or your scan, whatever you have sent, and they will merge both these details, right? This is called as merging. They overlap one uh, data on the other, okay? And they'll produce a surgical guide. This is, this is how a guide is produced. Sorry, this is a video of how an implant is placed with uh, a guided uh, surgery. Scan is done. This is called as merging. Okay, the soft tissue and hard tissue details are merged on a computer. Whatever details you are sending to them, they will utilize those details. And then they will plan first the processes. Okay, see the condition of the bone. The process is planned first, the position of the crowns. Then once it is confirmed, then they plan the position of the implants in exactly anatomically three-dimensional position. Once that is confirmed, they move on to designing of the surgical guide. Once this is done, this is converted to an STL format. And the surgical printing, printing of the guide is carried out. Once the guides are ready, your temporary is ready. So you just have to mill the temporaries. Okay. This is how the temporaries are milled in the lab. Then they send you a surgical report, which all drills are to be used at various steps. So this is what was there previous pre-op and this is post-op which was planned on the computer. And this is the outcome. You can see there's hardly any error in that. Whatever you have planned, it's replicated exactly same in the patient's mouth. Okay. So this is how merging is done. A small video of merging and this is how an STL file is converted. A guide is produced. This is not your job. It is done in the lab. So don't need to worry what, but you should have a knowledge of this. If you're doing it in-house, then you have to get yourself trained. You should have a software in your clinic that makes your life very easy. But then again, the cost increases. This is how a surgical guide is fabricated, this is designed. <clears throat> okay. So first thing you need to do when you receive the surgical guide is to check the fit of the guide. Okay. 
because if the guide is rocking your surgery will go wrong your angulations will go wrong and you will your implant position will go wrong so this is one of the thing which you need to take care like the the guides there should be no space between the teeth and your guide okay so check the guide first then what are what are type of guides we'll see one by one one is tooth supported guide another is mucosa supported guide third one is bone supported guide okay this is a tooth supported guide where this is used in cases where it's it's a partially dentulous case where you have supporting teeth there so you take the support of your adjacent teeth and uh, place the guide so here no anchor pins are required okay this is only indicated when there are few few teeth are present in the oral cavity okay second is mucosal supported guide this is used when the patient is fully dentulous okay this guide rests on the mucosa as the name suggests and for this you require various steps are required you need a accurate bite and a impression for this guide to be fabricated and this has to be secured in the mucosa with the help of anchor pins okay so these are the anchor pins which will go into the mucosa and secure the guide so that guide doesn't move and the chances of error are minimized okay the, the anchor pins are provided by the company so you can use them <clears throat> don't no need to buy the anchor pins third type is bone supported guide this is used in severely resolved cases where there is no soft there is hardly any bone left so you need to open the <clears throat> open the flap reflect the flap <coughs> sorry secure the guide with the anchor pins again and <clears throat> place the implant so now you'll ask me why when you when you are reflecting the flap why you require a guide in this in this case this is so that your implant is in exact three dimensional position you have a position of the implant is exactly parallel so there are processes there is no problem in the processes so this guide has to be used okay this is a bone supported guide what is the surgical armamentary which is required the various kits are available one is for master kit you can have a special kit for this narrow kit and you have a sinus lift kit so these are all the various drills which are there and which are the the step by step this has to be followed it has a tissue punch it has a bone flattening drill it has a 2 mm pilot drill then your final then various drills are involved then comes your final drill then there's a profile drill and you finally place an implant we'll see one by one how these are used okay so first is your tissue punch once you have checked the guide the fitting of the guide everything is ready you are ready for the surgery first step is after giving anesthesia the tissue punch okay and everything is at a very slow speed this is at a 300 rpm with saline okay every company has different protocols i have used lot of dio implant that's why i'm showing you this okay your second comes your bone flattening drill whenever the bone is irregular they will tell you that they will have a surgical report where a bone flattening is required or not if required then use this bone flattening drill that's a second drill at 300 rpm with saline okay this is how it is used third comes your once the bone is flattened the irregular bone contours are they are leveled okay third comes your pilot drill which is a 2 mm drill which has to be used with a sleeve because your first drill is used with a sleeve so that your angulation is correct whatever you have planned you go in the same angulation same direction okay this is your first drill to minimize the micro moment then the final drill okay then comes your profile drill okay especially used in d1 d2 bone okay to prevent the excessive torque during the implant placement so all the previous drills which i showed you are to be used at 50 rpm you can use saline or you cannot you may not use the saline it's up to you then abutment profile for proper emergence this has to be used at 300 rpm once this is done there is an implant placement you can see there are certain markings on the implant holders which they they will give you instructions where that marking should be it should always be on the buccal side so that you can determine the hex direction while placing an abutment this is how implant is placed perfect okay so now we'll see few of the cases this was the case which i showed you in the beginning which was done with conventional implants which were with the free hand surgery this case failed i told you as i told you after 2 years you can see that the apartment direction it's all in different directions right so this patient came back to me with this fracture processes 
So this case I decided to do with with guided surgery. Okay, I removed three failed implants. I retained two implants and took an impression. What you can see over here, these are the markers, radio opaque markers, which you need to fit it on the patient's denture. Okay, because these will act as a guideline when when you merge this data, right? So a CT scan was done with this uh, denture with the markers. Okay, it was sent to the uh, to the lab. This is how it was planned. You can see the perfect implant position. Six implants were planned in this case. All were parallel to each other. I required two sinus lifts in the two. Both sinus lift was done on the both sides. So this is how the surgery went on. And this is the position of the implant. Okay. The two implants were retained. I gave an over denture to the patient, and patient was happy. This is immediately after surgery. You can see there is no bleeding, nothing. Patient is comfortable. Next day there was no swelling, no discomfort. Okay. Second case. This was a patient who came to me with all with a periodontally compromised situation. You can see on the OPG there are hardly there is a bone support with the teeth left. There are few bridges, few mobile teeth are there, and he wanted teeth on the same day. Right. He was a teacher and he cannot. He said he cannot move without uh, teeth. So uh, planned a CAT CAM surgery for him, like a guided surgery. the data was sent to the lab this is how it was planned the processes was planned first right this is how upper and lower uh, processes looked on the computer uh, upper initially we had planned all on 6 but then uh, uh, in 16 uh, and 26 region the bone was very less so sinus lift was required so we we uh, planned to shift it to all on 4 in upper arch okay the, the so the plan was changed accordingly this was a this is what you get when you uh, get the implants and surgical guide this is the uh, surgical report you have to follow all the instructions which are given on the on this for every implant there are different instructions depending upon uh, the implant size the site of the implant the drill sequence is there everything you have to follow strictly you cannot miss a single step out of this okay so this was a twin guide case what is twin guide case where two guides are prepared first guide was we extracted the lower anterior bridge which was already mobile and retained his posterior teeth okay and planned the uh, first guide where anterior four implants were planned and the guide was taking the support of the teeth okay so this made a life easy okay so once these four implants were placed this guide was removed and the remaining teeth were extracted okay and then the second guide which was a mucosal supported guide was used see this is the first guide where i have placed implants in the anterior region the posterior teeth have been retained okay so the implants placed in the position this is how the then the second guide was secured with the help of these implants and the pins okay and the posterior implants were placed right i retained uh, two teeth in the lower left posterior region to maintain the vertical height so that is vertical height does not collapse and in one uh, in 36 region there was a, a big socket over there like there was a bone loss so i did bone grafting in that region okay but the implants were placed flapless immediately this is a, this is immediately post op these are the smart abutments which were which were which were ready with me and we uh, placed it immediately okay this was the position immediate uh, cbct of the patient second day you can see how the implants every every implant is parallel there is nothing like no change of angulation nothing whatever was planned on the cbct exact on the Uh, cat cam everything was same it was replicated in the patient's mouth okay this was immediate provisional which was given to the patient patient was very happy upper we did all on four now here uh, there was some complication there was one complication which happened with this case i would like to share that so even with guided surgeries complications can happen this i encountered with this case when i placed the guide right the surgery was completed and the moment i palpated on the parietal side i could see that i could feel the implants on the in the parietal flap okay so i removed when i checked it i removed reflected the flap i removed all the implant both the implants they were in the parietal flap okay there was error in planning <clears throat> okay so this can happen with anybody so you need to be very much sure that you are uh, you have placed the guide properly everything everything goes on fine so i removed those two implants and placed it free handed okay with the conventional uh, implant type. With the, I placed it three hundred. So all on four, this case was completed. The impressions were taken, upper and lower impression. This is after six months when I had to give him the final processes. You can see all the implants are properly osteointegrated. This was the final processes. 
थर्ड केस अपर एंटीरियर्स वे मिसिंग ओके अगेन द प्रोसेस प्रोटोकॉल वाज फॉलोड सेम दिस वाज अ ट्रॉमा केस ओके द दिस गाय हैड मेट विद एन ट्रॉमा रोड ट्रैफिक एक्सीडेंट एंड ही वांटेड टीथ ऑन द सेम डे सो गिव हिम एन आरपीडी इनिशियली देन प्लैंड इट फॉर विद कैट कैम एंड दिस वाज द आउटकम ऑन द सेम डे लाइक आई कुड गिव हिम प्रोविजनल्स इमीडिएटली दिस वाज अगेन अ ट्रॉमा केस वेयर दिस इज द सेम पेशेंट okay you can see the bone healing and the uh, healing after 4 months okay the case of upper anteriors this was a case where i did a grafting first and the grafting had failed okay the gbr had failed there was hardly any bone left so i uh, again took a cbct for se second time for graft when i called the patient after grafting was uh, grafting uh, was done so i found there was hardly any bone I send it to send it send this case to the lab to, to the do people then they planned a case this case for me this was the outcome you can see immediately after surgery it was done through uh, surgical guides and patient went with teeth no no problems at all this is how it was planned you can see the graft particles there in the x ray and this was the outcome okay so patient was happy we, we and almost 3 years have been done the patient is still happy like there's no problem at all okay this is the beauty of this then this is a case of lower anteriors again a case of rta a compromised bone ridge you can see you can see on the cbct okay two implants were planned this is a healing and the final abutments the final prosthesis okay this was a case of congenitally missing lateral incisors okay both the lateral incisors were missing female patient we planned a ortho treatment for her first to create a space okay <clears throat> implant planning was done again in this case the space was uh, very less so we had to put narrow implants okay this case was done with megagen any ridge okay the, you can see the implants in position they are more towards the parietal side Milled abutments were used in this case. In the final outcome. You can do a sinus lift, indirect sinus lift with this with guided surgery. Okay, there's a special kit which is available for indirect sinus lift. No need to reflect flap. Okay, with the balloon technique you can lift the sinus membrane. It is a traumatic, no problems at all. This is the outcome. This case was done by one of my friend. He is in Delhi. He is uh, practicing guided surgery over there. He is Dr. Sudhir Yadav. he did this case i'm showing his case on his behalf this was my case where a canine was to be extracted and six was missing so we planned both the uh, implants to be placed in the same sitting we extracted the canine and through guided surgery we place an implant in the canine region okay and implant in the sixth region was planned indirect sinus lift was required that was done this is how it was planned this is how it went You can see the surgery in process, and this is the final position of the implants. This is how the process is looked. Again, upper and lower full edentulous case. This case is also from Dr. Sudhir Yadav from Gurugram. Whatever was planned, exactly same was replicated in the patient's mouth. No errors at all. You can see immediately after surgery. no flap reflected no no bleeding no suturing nothing there is there was no post op edema immediate post op opg so what what can go wrong with guided surgery also so if your planning is not proper you can damage your adjacent teeth if your guide placement is not proper if your guide is not fabricated properly if the planning is improper if not done properly if there are errors in the planning same will be replicated in the patient's mouth you might land up in damaging the adjacent teeth you might land up in perforating the sinus also you might land up in damaging the nerve so the planning has to be perfect and the execution again the execution has to be very perfect you have to check everything before you start the surgery you have to follow the all the protocols the surgical report you have to follow st step by step okay then only the errors will be minimized and again you should have i'll again say as a beginner you first learn conventional implantology then switch to guided because knowledge of conventional implantology is very important if you uh, if you land up in any of the any complications like 
it happened with me in my case where the implants were in the parietal flap so i had to remove those implants and place with with the free hand surgery so you should be able to do to manage the complications okay so you should have a sound knowledge of conventional implant logic first then only start with guided implant logic though it looks easy what are take away points so sky is the limit when planning with 3d implant dentistry and guided surgery however technology and products should never be uh, super set uh, should never be taken for granted you should have sound sound knowledge of surgical principles <clears throat> start with a simple case if you are doing a guided surgery start with a lower molar it's a very simple case to do and then only jump to uh, complicated cases as you need to first get familiar to the system to the kit and to the protocols then only start with full mouth cases don't directly jump to a full mouth surgery so to conclude though it appears very simple to drill a hole in the bone and place an implant but it requires a lot of criteria to be evaluated before their placement so you should have a sound knowledge of everything and see friends this is already people have started working on this this is return of subperiosteal implants enjoy this video so now subperiosteal implants are being done with the help of guided surgery so previously what why this these implants were stopped were because you required two surgeries one was for taking the impressions to fabricate the implants and second again you have to reflect the flap and place the implants but now with the help of guided surgery there is no need for a first surgery you have to just scan it a cbct data is required send it to lab they can fabric fabricate a design for you a framework for you so only one surgery is required you save lot of time and it is very accurate very perfect this is helpful in severe resorb cases where you where nothing is possible so you can go for subperiosteal implants this is also possible with guided people are doing zygomatic implants cord zygomas with easy guides from norris from bioline you can put pterygoid implants with the help of um guided surgery you can you get uh, guides for pterygoid implants also you can do sinus lift with the help of guided surgery or we can do open sinus lift where you get a guide to drill a window right where a window has to be made you get a guide for that also so guided surgery has lot of applications just you need to have a good knowledge and a good support a good implant system a good kit <coughs> this is the future so thank you very much for the patient listening this is my email address and my numbers if you have any any questions you can directly call me or send me a whatsapp i'll answer your questions again uh we do conduct courses on basic implants and guided surgeries also in ahmednagar and in pune very soon we are coming up with a tie up with a german university where we'll have uh, implant full implant courses of six modules out of that five modules will be in india and final module where will be in germany where you will have an exam and uh, on passing the exam you will get a certificate two certificates one is implant certificate so second is a fellowship certificates so details will be shared with you thank you very much thank you dr sanjay asnani for the excellent session uh, i now request you to kindly stop the screen share friends uh, very quickly we'll be starting with the live question and answer session uh, definitely the much awaited session uh during the live webinar before that uh, like dr sanjay asnani mentioned about the uh, implantology courses i'd like to give you a small brief as to what the courses are uh so dr sanjay asnani has been uh, successfully conducting implantology courses uh from introduction to uh, from introductory uh, implantology courses to advanced dental implant courses he along with his team of experts uh, conduct courses like he's already mentioned in ahmednagar uh, and in pune uh what is special about this courses is the fact that you receive one year of mentorship i think this is very difficult in today's time and due to the busy schedules of all the implant lodges it's uh, very difficult to get someone as a mentor but uh, rest assured dr sanjay asnani would love to be your mentor would love to be your teacher for one for one full year uh i'm sure you would like to avail from this beautiful uh, opportunity that dr sanjay asnani along with his team is offering uh 
please do get in touch with Dr. Sanjay Asnani for the introductory implant courses as well as the advanced courses. I'm sure he would be the best person who you could be in touch with. Uh, also at this juncture, I would also like to tell you about the international certification courses that he's just mentioned. Uh, the Indian Academy of Oral Surgery and Implantology uh, uh, is a board along the Dr. Sanjay Asnani, who is a master mentor in this course, would be uh, conducting a certified international course. Uh, like I said, a certified international course. And uh, this is in collaboration with the German Council of Oral Surgery uh, and Implantology and the International Medical College, Germany. Uh, like he's already mentioned that this course has about six modules. Five would be in India. One would be in Germany, wherein you would uh, be required to pass a test, wherein you would be awarded with an international certification. Uh, again, a beautiful opportunity for all you budding implantologists and for the ones who are seeking expert mentorship uh, from Dr. Sanjay Asnani and his team, who's been a pioneer in CAD CAM, who's been a pioneer in digitally guided surgery. Please do get in touch with him. He would love to be your mentor. And I'm sure he, along with his team, would would be the best option, rather the best choice for you when it comes to taking a course. Uh, so that's it about the courses. Uh, uh, very quickly, we'd be moving to the question and answer session. Uh, Dr. Sanjay, uh, Dr. Sanjay would like uh, you to tell a little bit more about the courses, just receiving some question and answers, some, some doubts of the courses. Yeah, if you could just explain the course in detail, please. See, uh, for this, we have shortlisted two centers, like one is in Nagpur, uh, Dr. Vipin Dehane, one of my friend, and he's an old surgeon, one of the partner of this academy. He will be taking care of Nagpur area. In Pune, we have uh, Dr. Yusuf is there. So we have collaborated with few people. We have a good list of speakers who will be taking various topics. So first, first module will be taken by German professors who will be coming to India. We were supposed to launch this course in the month of June, but because of this COVID outbreak, we had to postpone this. We were thinking somewhere around in September, October to launch it. So first batch will begin in September or, or October. The first module will be taken by German professors. Then rest four of the modules will we'll be taking care. And the final module, we have to travel to Germany where uh, there'll be a two day session with live surgeries will be shown, advanced procedures will be shown. And third day we'll have an exam. And uh, once you clear the exam, there'll be oral and written exam both. And then you'll be awarded two certificates. One is a fellowship certificates, which will be free for five years. There'll be no charge for that. But then after five years, you'll have to renew that certificate. Second certificate will be implant completion certificate will be from an international medical university. We have collaborated with that. So this is how the module will go, the six modules. And if you're interested in MSc, we can guide you for MSc in implantology in Germany also. That will be a one year course. And this certificate will be valid on this basis. You will save some time and you can skip few modules on the basis of this certificate. So it's a win-win situation for participants. Thank you so and much. And in, and India will be giving you patients like you can get your own patients. We'll be providing with the patients. Like you will have a hands-on on patients also and models, everything. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Sanjay Asnani. Uh, friends, you can definitely get in touch with him anytime like he's mentioned and you can get more information on the same. Uh, I would like to quickly tell you about the Hello. Is it audible? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Sitting. We do. We have a center in Mumbai. Mumbai also. Like we have. We are in touch with an hospital where uh, we'll be taking the courses in Mumbai also. Pune, Mumbai, uh, Nagpur, and uh, Aurangabad. Thank you so much, Dr. Sanjay Asnani. Friends, like I said, you can definitely get in touch with them to know more the courses. Uh, friends, very quickly, before we move on to the live question and answer session, I would like to give you another one minute wherein you can uh, jot down your questions. Uh, before that, I'd like to tell you about the upcoming webinar. Uh, Siddhi, can we please have the poster for the upcoming webinar? Friends, uh, the upcoming webinar is once again going to be on the topic tilted implants. Do we really need to tilt implants? Uh, would be taken care by Dr. Nitin Ahuja. Dr. Nitin Ahuja is also a name synonymous in the dental fraternity. Uh, he is a specialist in graftless approaches in the treatment of atrophic jaws. Uh, we would love to have each and every one of you for this live webinar. This is happening tomorrow, uh, 24th April Friday. At the same time, 5 p.m. Indian Standard Time. You can find the link to register for this webinar in the chat box. Thank you so much. We look forward to having uh, you all Ruben, are we sending this live the, webinar. Uh, Ruben, Ruben. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
are we sending the video of this presentation to the participants definitely sir the video is recorded the participants okay. can see the video on facebook okay. as well as youtube all okay. right friends with this we come to the very important uh, session which is the live question and answer session dr uh, we are we start first question is from dr nikita bk what is the name of the software used in clinic see there are different softwares which are available there is a software called implant studio which is from um, free shape uh, there is an exocad software these are two softwares then there is a blue sky software which is there it depends which lab you are sending your work okay to for planning many of the people are using free shape for trios and like dio uses three shape uh, uh then uh, ostim uses uh, exocad so it depends which system you are using and where you are sending the uh, implants but then there are free downloads also available which you can download and practice on your laptops like the software so it require it's a learning curve you require a lot of learning you know it's a lot of uh, practice is required to get hold of these software thank you so much moving to the next question we have a question from dr amit pokharkar which technique is better to make the impression scanning or conventional method of course uh, scanning is any time better it's more accurate it's perfect like your processes will be uh, exact like uh, there will be no high points its fitting will be perfect so any time uh, uh, scanning is better but then see nowadays like depends where you are staying like if you are in mumbai and pune the lab guys like they are providing with the scanners their guys are moving uh, in the city if you call them they'll come to your clinic they'll charge you some amount and they'll scan your uh, impressions like there no no need for conventional impressions right so the scanning is any time better it's not necessary that you should buy a scanner if you are doing if you are living in a metro city you can always hire a scanner like right? right definitely uh, friends you can definitely hire a scanner and metro cities are the best places where you can find a rented scanner uh moving on to the next question uh a very important question i believe i agree intraoral scanners are best alternatives of traditional impression techniques but present situation my worries are the fact that how to sterilize the scanner and the scanner mouthpiece uh, we have to follow any guidelines to autoclave scanner surfaces i i forgot to tell you one thing ruben in yes. this situation like in this covid outbreak uh, uh digital uh, dentistry is going to it's much more safe you know like if you take an impression uh, with the conventional method there is a chances that uh, you might have to repeat an impression lab guy might reject your impression your pouring is not good right you have to disinfect the trays you have to disinfect the impression so everything has to be done and again if you go wrong you have to repeat the same procedure so what happens is the uh, number of visits of the patients are increased right so you never know which patient is a carrier so what are you focusing today is in this covid era is reduce the number of visits okay of the patient so this becomes very handy your uh, digital dentistry becomes very handy where you scan it so no need of uh, disinfecting the impression no need of disinfecting the sterilization of the tray right and then the impression directly goes to the lab okay and the lab guy uh, it's like he designs a process for you and send it send it to you next day so only thing is you can there are uh, the tips which are there okay they can be autoclaved and you get almost 3 5 3 to 4 tips along with the scanner If you want, you can buy the tips, which are very cheap, not very costly, and you can autoclave them, and you can chemical sterilize also. So you are very safe. You know, you are very uh, accurate. Thank you so much. So the answer is the tips can be very well autoclaved, and they can also be chemically sterilized. Moving on to the next question, a question from Doctor Nikita, which is the best radio opaque marker to be used? Uh, Gatta Barcha is the best markers. Like you have to make if you are uh, see if you uh, you require markers in uh, full mouth cases, right? so uh, you make the holes in the denture you fill it with the gatta barcha and you send the patient for scan so it is the best marker which is available which is like not costly it is al always there in your clinic thank you so much moving on to the next question what is the software you use to merge ct and scan details i told you like it's a software like implant implant studio is there exocad is there blue sky is there so various softwares are available this, this we had already answered like Thank you so much. Moving on to the next question, a question from Dr. Javed. What is the cost of the scanner and the software you've shown in your webinar? Uh, the the scanner, see, it, like depends which scanner and what you want in the scanner. What are your requirements? Like, uh, it starts from like thirty five lakhs, and budget is around say nine lakhs. Now ten lakhs. We have scanners which are around uh, say eight lakhs, eight point five lakhs. The Ray Scan, which has Been launched by uh, Chesa. It's around say eight point five or nine lakhs. I don't know the exact cost, but it's it's in the same range. 
uh, some companies give you a laptop with it and some companies don't give you a laptop you have to buy a high high end gaming laptop which is which is around 1 1.3 lakhs so the, the software doesn't come with the the planning software doesn't come with the the scanner you have to buy that software purchase that software and with the scanner you have now, see now uh, annual subscription is there with two companies they charge you annually but nowadays everybody is giving you a lifetime subscription free so there is no annual fee for the scanners okay it's a one time investment so it's a good tool to have in your clinic thank you so much moving on to the next question a question from dr thomas from dubai uh, which one do you prefer between sleeveless guide and sleeve guide and what would be your reason for see uh, the sleeve uh, the guide with the sleeve is more accurate okay uh, then again it depends many like ostem nowadays the system is they have launched is one guide and uh, in dubai you have uh, access guide right so uh, that is again a, a sleeveless uh, system okay so uh, if you are using dio implant then noble biocare they will they have their own sleeves you have to buy the sleeves or the lab guy will purchase the sleeves and they will charge you for that and sleeveless is like it's just an uh, slot is there or can you enter through it but the chances with the sleeve is that you might um, sometimes what happens is if your angulation is wrong the acrylic might you might shave two flecks of acrylics and then they might enter in the socket you can irrigate and remove it that's not an issue so again it depends it's a system specific like thank you moving on to the next question we have a question from dr nishan shrivastava how we do the phase bo transfer and articulation for fabrication of the processes digitally you have digital uh, articulators right it's there in the software if you see the software you have an articulator over there you can uh, there's no need to, i have never uh, phase bo transfer i have not done but then yes uh, for provisionals you don't need to do the uh, phase bo transfer you get the provisionals ready but when for final processes yes you have to record the phase bo records and transfer thing when you are going giving a definite uh, the final process is yes you have to use a facebook thank you uh, sir i missed your uh, the next question is sir i missed the part where you spoke about the contraindications could you please briefly explain the contraindications in digitally guided surgery a uh, very thin ridge okay you cannot uh, do guided surgery you require a good quantity of bone okay and uh, mouth opening like main contraindication is like restricted mouth opening if the mouth opening is restricted you cannot uh, do a guided surgery because the drills are very long okay so you should have an adequate mouth opening where you the especially in the posterior region the drills should pass freely there should be no obstruction otherwise i don't think any there is any restriction for uh, guided surgery thank you so much moving on to the next question here from dr reema since most of implant companies offer guided surgery kit what should we know when we select our first guided kit for our practice see uh, uh if you are an old implant like if you are doing conventional implants uh, there are kits which are universal kits which are available okay there are uh, uh, softwares which which give you a, a pilot drill guide right only a pilot drill has to be uh, done with that guide and rest you can go free hand okay so it's like there's no need to if uh, nowadays there's no need to change the system like if you are an adin user or if you are an ostem user ostem has a one guide right they have launched with one guide so uh, and uh, there are many system universal kits are available like i said access guide which is available the the system is available with us like in it's in pune with our implex center we have that uh, access guide system where it's an you can place any implant with that system you don't need to change your implant system for surgery, for a guided surgery only thing what whatever i told you require is a model and a cbct you can send it to us we can fabricate a design a guide fabricate a guide for you and send it to you along with the kit we can provide the kit also to you which you can use and use it and return it back to us there are thank you we are available going on with the next question what is the chance yes so universal kits are also available friends uh, moving on to the next question what is the chance of failure in digitally guided surgery see the failure what kind of failure like uh, a prosthetic failure or an implant implant failure can happen with anybody you know like any uh, we can it can happen with the conventional also it can happen with a uh, guided surgery also only thing you are sure is like you have placed an implant in exact three dimensional position your implants are parallel to each other so you cannot go wrong but then again yeah uh, failures can happen with uh, like in immediate implant immediate extraction cases 
<laughs> like I showed you one case where I'd extracted a molar and the, there's a high chance of that drills might slip, right, with the guided surgery. So the drills might slip and the angulation might change. So the implant might fail, okay. So, but then uh, it's the same, like whatever. Only thing is like you are very sure you have placed the implant properly. The angulation is proper, the implant's in the bone, okay. So chances of failure come down. They are reduced. Thank you so much. Moving on to the next question. Can we place short implants like Bicon implants using digitally guided surgery? See, I, I have not used Bicon, but yes, you can. If they have uh, the, they, if they are uh, following the guided system, they must be having a guided kit for that. You can place implant, any size implant can be placed with guided surgery. That length is not an, not an issue. Thank you so much. Moving the on company then. should provide you with the drills, you know. <coughs> Sorry. Thank you so much, sir. Moving on to the next question. A question from Dr. Ilihad from Saudi. Hi, doctor. Thank you for your presentation. It was a fantastic presentation. Very good information. As I have attended already few cases of digitally guided surgery. And now my lab technician has advised me to go for genius guided surgery instead of traditional. Is also claimed sleeveless and more visibility is there during the genius guided surgery. What are your views on the same? Uh, to be very frank, I have not heard about, heard about this genius guided surgery. What is that? I don't know. Like, it's a guided surgery. Like, what is genius guided surgery? It's like, if you can provide me, if you can WhatsApp me the details, I can answer your question. But I have not heard about this. Dr. Iliad, I would request you to kindly send some more information and maybe we can get back to you shortly. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Just a second. Moving on with the next question. Uh, what would be the best CAD CAM lab to send our models and the intraoral scan? Uh, see, uh, again, if you are using a DO uh, implant system, they have their own labs in Gurgaon. You can send them directly to them. They will design everything for you and send it to you, a complete package. For Austin, they have collaborated with uh, uh, Kerala, uh, Dent Care Lab in Kerala. Illusion also makes uh, surgical guides. Katara is also making surgical guides. So now all the labs which are, which are CAT CAM equipped, they are making the guides also. You, what you require is a 3D printer. Okay, good quality 3D printer to print the, print these guides. So it's the choice is your where you are staying. You can uh, Dent Care has a lot of collection centers like in all the cities, on the major cities. So you can just call them and they can they'll pick up your work and they'll give a guide, fabricate a guide for you. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next question: Do we have any specific course on a software company it's like ExoCAD Three Shape to learn digital planning? Yes. Uh, see these when you buy a software, these guys train you, right? Now. Again, as I told you, this is not any company specific uh, seminar. The Blue Skies uh, company guys have uh, uh, three day training course in major cities like Pune, Mumbai, Ahmedabad and Delhi. So they are coming, They every year they conduct these courses. Uh, ExoCAD also, yes, uh, they, you have people to train you. Uh, for three shape also, yes, uh, we have a lot of people in India who will train you for, uh, for, the, for the software. Uh, if you buy a software from that company, they, these guys will help you out in the training session. Like it's not that difficult. It's like playing a video game. You know, it's like the more you play, the more you master, master you will become. So it's like uh, if you buy a software in three, four days, you will be basic training will be done. Then you have to uh, practice on your own in your clinic. Thank you, sir. Moving on to the next question. Uh, a question from Dr. Nikita. Can sinus lift surgery be also done? Yes. Indirect sinus lift can be done. I, I showed you one case, two cases where uh, indirect sinus, sinus lift was done. The bone height in that case was just two millimeters, the available bone. And patient was not willing for an open sinus lift surgery. So we tried with this and uh, it's doing fine. Like no, three years down the line, there's no problem. There's no bone loss with that case. And uh, it's a balloon technique. We can use it. There's a kit available, especially uh, from, the, from the company and you can do it. No, no worries, no issues with that. Thank you so much, sir. Moving on to the next question. Uh, drill RPM. Do we need to maintain it during guided surgery? Uh, does the guided surgery drills harvest the bone during the surgery process? Yes, there are uh, 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 some systems which harvest the bone also. And the RPM, like uh, as, as I showed you, when you start with the punch, it is at, it should be at a 300 RPM. Second uh, drill should be at a 300 RPM. Then when you start the exact osteotomy, it is at 50 RPM because the drills are very sharp. And what we do, what we follow in guided surgery is uh, we don't uh, drill to the length. Okay, we gradually increase the length as well as the width. Like if it's a 10 mm implant, 
4 by 10, we'll start with say 2 by 5, then move to 2 by 7, 2 by 10. Okay, so it's a gradual increase in length as well as width. So the RPM required is very less, very less heat is generated. But then we'll recommend that uh, you use saline, but at 50 RPM, no saline is required. Thank you, sir. Moving on to the next question. What is the accuracy? Just a second, sorry. What is the accuracy of twin guide? Accuracy with? Twin guide. Twin guide is as good as single guide. First guide is your tooth supported guide. So you cannot go wrong with that guide. Your fit guide your fitting is perfect. So the first, uh, once you finish with the placement of that, the use of that guide, remove that guide, uh, do the extraction as, as I did. And the implants are there, okay. The holes are there in the guide, so the implants are there. You can use the pins to stabilize that guide, okay. No, no need of anchor pins for that guide, you know. You can take the support from the implants which you have already played with the place with the first guide, okay. So those act as your anchor pins, okay. And then you can place the posterior implants. Thank you, sir. Moving on to the next question uh, Can uh, digital, digitally guided sur surgery, implant surgery, I believe implant surgery, uh, be kept? be executed on medically compromised patients yes why not what kind of medical problems you are talking i place i have done uh, the case which i showed you was a smoker and a diabetic the case which fractured with the conventional implants then i did it with the, did with the guided surgery so it was you can it's not a contraindication thank you so much uh, moving on with the next question sir i am an absolute beginner uh, how do i start clinical implant practice uh, do a, uh, a good course for conventional implants. Okay, <clears throat> once you are uh, you have a thorough knowledge of implantology, like the bone uh, about the bone, the implant system, the osseointegration, integration, the healing, everything you learn first with conventional implants, and slowly you can shift to guided. It's like uh, don't directly jump to guided because you should have a basic knowledge of surgery and the healing and everything like processes, everything. So do a good course where they will teach you everything right from A to Z of implants, and then. They, they, see, if it's a good course, then they can uh, show you guided surgeries also. So it's a full, full package, you know. <clears throat> Thank you, Don't sir. do short courses of two days. No, you, you will learn nothing in two days. Like Nobody can learn implant in two days or a three-day course. You require extensive learning. Still date, we are learning. We attend courses. So it's like it's a never-ending process. Thank you, friends. Like Dr. Sanjay mentioned, it's a never-ending never process. Uh, you keep. You need to keep upgrading and updating yourself. Uh, moving on with the next question. So this is a very common question that we've received. Uh, what is the fee of the course for the cert international certification that you've mentioned in your webinar? Uh, and can you please also tell us about the modules in brief? Uh, it's like you can visit our website. Rubin, can you provide them the website ID? Like everything mm -hmm. is there on the website. Uh, the course uh, mm -hmm. fees is like around, it will be for, for the first batch, it will be, it will be around say 2.75 to 3 lakhs. That excludes the trip to Germany. That you'll have the participants will have to bear the charges for Germany travel and stay over there. This includes all the five modules in India. Like uh, first will like uh, from first to five modules, the charges are covered. The charges of certification and exam are covered in this. Okay, the only extra charge will be the travel to Germany, the expenditure, the visa, and all the charges. Thank you so much. Uh, for the ones who've had this doubt and who've uh, raised a question, you can log on to www.iaosi.in. Uh, IAOSI refers to the Indian Academy of Oral Surgery and Implantology. Uh, moving on to the next question. I have heard uh, guided surgery is good for aesthetic region because of sufficient space to place and to keep guide and work on drills. Is it not suggested in the posterior region with less opening patients? Yeah, that's what I told you. Mouth opening is a criteria. You should have adequate mouth opening. You cannot do guided surgery with submuscular fibrosis patients and patients having TMD, like uh, reduced mouth opening. So the first criteria is mouth opening should be adequate because you can see you have to compensate for two things. One is the length of the implant and second is the length of the, of the offset. Okay, the guide has to be, the, the thickness of the guide and the sleeve. So the, the length of the drill increases, okay. If you have a reduced mouth opening, you cannot uh, put the implant with proper angulation in the posterior region. Anterior is fine, you can adjust, but posterior it's very difficult in a restricted mouth opening case. Thank you so much, sir. There is a question which says, uh, do you conduct conventional implantology courses? Yes, we do conduct courses, uh, a basic course, advanced course. We do have these, these options also. 
friends, you can get in touch with Dr. Sanjay Asnani and his team for conventional courses as well. Uh, if you've, uh, I'm, def I'm sure you've noted down his contact details. Uh, let, let, there's one more question. Second. Ruben, your voice is breaking. Yeah, sorry. Uh, moving on to the next question. Uh, once again, we've got a comment which says it was a super question. Thank you so much. Uh, can you please explain us what is, just a second, I'm not able to understand this. So. Asking, yeah. Can you please explain how, what, how to renew the certificate after we've done the implant module course? See, for uh, five years, fellowship is free, as I told you. The certificate is for lifetime. The fellowship certificate, if you want to renew, there's a nominal fee which, they, which the university will be charging you. That will be around, say, 50 euros, not more than that, for renewal. Thank you so much. Uh, I think with this, we come to an end. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Sanjay Asnani. It was thank a pleasure. You, thank you. It was a pleasure having you. Friends, uh, you all deserve a certificate of participation. Uh, the same would be issued to you within three working days. Uh, like I said, you can get in touch with Dr. Sanjay Asnani and, and his team for any and every courses, right from the basics of implantology to the advanced courses. Uh, I would like Dr. Sanjay Asnani, if you could uh, please pronounce and tell us your contact details. We have a small uh, request from you. Yeah. Friends, yeah, please I, do note the contact number. Email ID is drsanjayasnani at the rate gmail.com. Uh, you can visit my website. You can, uh, my contact details are 9422225300. This is my WhatsApp number and contact number. Another, another number is 989005050. So you can contact me anytime if you have any problems. You can give me a call or you can send me a text. Thank you so much, Dr. Sanjay Asnani. Once again, it was a pleasure having hey, you. Hey, uh, Ruben, will I get a certificate yes, of presentation? You will definitely get a certificate. <laughs> you will definitely get a certificate thank of you. presentation, thank sir. You. Thank you so much. It's nice having you. Thank you, friends. May you all have a good thank evening. Thank you.